Welcome to the Wake Up Dad Show, a Daddiest production. This podcast is for you, Dad. This is where we talk about all things related to dadhood, from parenting to relationships to financial and physical health. Your hosts, Dr. Scott and Dr. Evan, are two dads who are committed to helping you. Join our Facebook community by searching Daddiest, where conscious dads connect and collaborate. Hey, dads, welcome to another episode of the Wake Up Dad Show. Brought to you by Daddius. I'm your co-host, Dr. Ev, and I've got with me Dr. Scotty V. Scotty in the house. <laughs> All the way from Australia. <laughs> All the way from Australia, mate. Australia, mate. Can you say that? Australia. Try, mate. Try. That's not bad. That's probably better than me. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I don't know. I've been here so long now since 2003. Yeah, what's that, like 16 years? God, that's a long time. Crazy. So um, I find when I talk, you're probably used to my accent now, Ev, but I find when I talk to people back home, they're like, oh, you sound like such an Aussie. I'm like, nah, nah, I don't at all sound like an Aussie. When you really hear an Aussie speak, yeah. That's right, yeah. Maybe slightly, like some words, like Australia, mate. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. I reckon. I reckon, yeah. <laughs> Although that's being used over there now. Oh, yeah, uh, it's I hear catchy. that all the time over there. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, well, oh, Aussie, I reckon. Aussie, Aussie's, Aussies are dominating. Yeah, well, you've got some oh, great hey, slang. Hey, get this. Did some you hear slang. it? Mm. Oh, we, we've got some great slang. I cannot believe this. This is such an abomination. Totally nothing to do with tonight's topic. Have you heard one of my patients i'm a chiropractor see people one of my patients yesterday was in and he said did you hear about the australian like teenage boys hockey team i was like nah i was like they went over to canada and played in a tournament and they beat the canadians in ice hockey wow now wow yeah that's that's like us going over there and beating you guys at surfing (laughs) I you know, know like, that's about like, how bad what? it is. That's crazy. I, I or, like, or, or rugby. I, can't even I don't know that. if you guys are a big rugby country. Yeah, yeah it's pretty big rugby, rugby country. But, you know, Canada yeah. has a decent rugby, right? Here in Australia, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not into my ice hockey anymore over here. But I don't know. On the Gold Coast, which has yeah. about, I think, it's probably getting up to about 700,000 people now. So it's, you know, it's a decent sized place. Yeah. There's one sense. ice rink. Wow. One ice rink. Wow. Right. That's the amount of yeah. hockey that's here. Right. Wow. In a 700,000 yeah. person city in Canada, it'd be like 27 ice rinks. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Be, like yeah, every kid probably plays that hockey in Canada. Yeah. Every kid yeah. plays hockey in Canada. So, right. anyways, I thought give that or take was a few, but yeah, like almost everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, even I did, right? Like yeah. a lot of people, anyway. But yeah. Yeah. I was completely shocked and blown away, and I'm like, yeah. that is really cool for Australia, I guess. But it's an absolute abomination for Canada, guys. Oh, that's that's the, I mean, fourteen. I, I think they were fourteen or sixteen or something like yeah. that. It's like. Oh, Canada's not looking good. What the hell's going on over there? Is, does no Canada idea. still win gold medals against America? Oh, we're always in that. We're always in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, we're usually in the top two. So, yeah, that's that's pretty shocking. Good. Yeah. So let's let's I know, introduce shocking. the show. <laughs> let's introduce the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our topic tonight is: Are you a deadbeat dad? And, you know, the, the word deadbeat dad is thrown around. I don't know if there really is a definition for it. Uh, we put together really a, a top, four, top four ways to identify um, whether you're a deadbeat dad or you know a deadbeat dad. And there is a silver lining to this. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Um- yeah, before I go any further, it's so weird. This is now the second time for us doing this where we are recording this and not just as an audio, but as a video. So hop on, have a look, and uh, you know, mm-hmm. check us out on YouTube. Uh, it's just Daddyus on YouTube. And you know, 
let us know how the how the video is going so it's it's so different recording with video than it is with audio it's fun i think it's it's more more real i think yeah. um yeah yeah it's absolutely just, I think it's more fun so anyways yeah. check that you out get to, you get to see scott in the tank top Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> 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 if you all right if you're wondering yeah. what i did there on the audio i sun's out guns out you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually has a shirt right, on so, today so that's good I, I do have a shirt on today so <laughs> are you a deadbeat dad right so i think straight away this is going to bring up uh conversations inside dad's heads like straight away it's like things like either no i'm not a deadbeat dad that's bullshit or "Ooh, am i a deadbeat dad what is that right so I think, you know, definition of it is just, I think without going into a definitive definition kind of thing, it's, it's like, are you a dick or not? Right? Like, I think these ones are going to be pretty self-explanatory. And mm-hmm. we were talking about it in the pre-show that there's a, there's a definitive uh, scale, right? Like, you could be 100% absolute dickhead, deadbeat, fucking idiot dad, right? Like, just without a doubt, everyone, including yourself, knows it. And you don't even want to change. Yeah. And you like, actually that, don't even care if you're going to be it. dead. Yeah. You might even be proud of it. Right? Yeah. You might even Possibly. Be, yeah. I, I chucked my firm in this girl and that's what I did. Right? That's it. Right? Like literally yeah. nothing else. And then there's obviously <laughs> the other side, which is what we aspire to in Daddyus, which is to be an awesome dad, to be an awesome man, and to have it all right so there's this whole continuum between the two and none of us i doubt are 100 percent awesome and i'm hoping because our demographic is not really deadbeat dads that we're probably going to have too many people listening to that at the 100 percent dickhead dad scale scale either but we all have little bits and pieces of these things that are going to happen from a periodic point of view and a time and, and on another scale. So when we get into these, I want you to be thinking about it and sort of weigh it against yourself. Give yourself a score from zero to 10 or zero to a hundred on these ones and go, yeah, I, I'm zero. There's no way I ever, ever do that stuff. Not even close. Or like, yeah, I'm like a two on that scale. I actually do a bit of this stuff. And then that's where we can talk about that silver lining at the end about, you know what we might be able to do about it if we have some deadbeat i'm gonna i'm just gonna add a deadbeat dickhead dad traits <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure i heard you say chucking some sperm into her <laughs> yeah i did wow. yes i did yeah, yeah that's the first time i've ever heard that uh, <laughs> chucking some sperm into her oh my goodness okay so is that gonna that's the quote for the show that's <laughs> That's in the show notes. <laughs> hey, um, okay, so yeah, we'll start with we'll start with number one, and um, yeah, just to kind of piggyback what you said, awareness is key, obviously, to change, and uh, and so we're going to do our best to, you know, to bring these forward and 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 create a silver lining, and um, as you said, like it's not exactly our the demographic that's being attracted to daddy is considering our Facebook pages, conscious dads who want to get together, collaborate and support each other. Um, so here it goes. Uh, first one is uh, drug use, heavy drug use. So, I mean, there's no way that you can really be there for your kids. If, if you're a heavy drug user and you're constantly high, um, that's really that's really number one. Anything to add to that, Scott? Well, really, it's it's about again uh, a scale, right? So we're talking like heavy drug use, whether you're completely addicted, you can't go without it. You are dependent on it. You are spending your family's money on it. You don't spend time with the kids because of it. Like it literally is taking over your life. We're not talking yeah. about going out and having some drinks with the boys periodically, or you know that type of thing it's really where it's taken over your life you're completely addicted and you don't know what to do about it and you have no time for yourself for your kids for your wife for anything besides the drug it's taken over your life right yeah. and again there's 
the variations of that where you could be zero on that you could be a hundred where that's what i just described or where on that scale are you how much is that affecting your life in a negative way because some drugs like alcohol or pot like pots legal in canada now isn't it is that right yeah legal yeah. i'm actually yeah, there you go. Right now. so like i'm not talking about this i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, so that's not what we're talking about is like, you know, getting together with people and having a fun time periodically. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when it takes over your life, when it is just horrendous. And I can guarantee there's going to be some dads who are listening to this who, who are on that scale somewhere. They're, they know Absolutely. they're doing that more than they should. It's affecting their life more than they should. Even if you bury your head in the sand, pretend that it's not happening or, ooh, I'm not really that. This is where you want to gauge yourself, zero to 10 scale. Where are you on that? If you're anything more than like a, I don't know, zero, maybe one, right? You, you really want to be reeling that shit in and getting some help. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so many, like in practice, there are so many cases of abuse um, from dads who were, like alcoholics and um, the drugs and that kind of thing. And, um, and yeah, like the, the damage of these kids, uh, well, they're not, they weren't kids anymore. They were grownups uh, still dealing with, with, with the impact of, of, you know, the stuff that happened during the, the substance abuse. So um, yeah. I think, I think it's a good Crazy. point to bring up as well in here is that like you can think about the heavy um, illegal drugs like ice and heroin and those types mm -hmm. of things. But on that scale as well is prescription drugs. Like there oh, are sure. a lot of extremely addictive mm -hmm. prescription drugs. And oh, because yeah. it's prescription and if you're addicted to it, it's going to cause the same problems. So if oh, you get a script from your doc for it, doesn't mean that you're not on this scale, right? I know painkillers yeah. in particular, oh. opiates and things are just off the chart addictive. Off and the chart addictive. Ruin, ruin people. people's lives. I've, yeah. you know, I've got, there's somebody in my life close to me who got addicted to it and took over. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Prescription drugs, they can take over your life, you know, especially those opioids, the painkillers, that kind of thing. Um, Tylenol threes, like there's literally a clinic in Toronto and that's what they deal with is just ton all three addiction, like just getting people off. Like that's, it's, it's a big deal. So really, um, is, is that, oh, yeah. um, is that prescription or is that just over the uh, time? Tylenol three, I believe is prescription. Yeah. I believe prescription. it's prescription. Okay, I was going to say, yeah. wow. I didn't think it'd be that strong if it was over the counter, but Tylenol to me sounds like over the counter, but a, a prescription one. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not an expert on on this. I've, I've never touched on all three. I don't even know. I, I, like, I don't know. I, I really I don't know for sure, but I, I think it must be because it's that strong. Yeah. Um, okay. Second one is um, abusing your kids. So, I mean, physical abuse. So, hitting your kids. Um, mental or emotional abuse. So telling them they're, they're no good. Um, calling them names, swearing at them. Um, you know, anything where you're knocking them down and, um, not just physically, but emotionally or mentally making them feel less than, um, yeah, just, uh, any, anything like that. Definitely. So, yeah any kind of abuse physical mental verbal right so we're not talking again about the idea of um you know back in the day my mom had the old wooden spoon <laughs> and got so the wooden spoon, you know, the art, yeah yeah i got that more than once um yeah. so you know there's there's varying degrees of what would you, what'd you do oh, i don't even know you don't even know yeah? um <laughs> no no yeah don't, don't I don't, yeah no i just i don't know i don't we don't know. remember and that then, part we just remember getting the hit so we don't even remember what the lesson was that's right remember what, and, isn't um, that interesting yeah and um then it was just the threat right mm. Mm. i remember 
I'm going to get the wooden spoon. Ah! And you'd run away. And like, it was, yeah. it was, it was a definite thing. Once you have that first hit, it's, it's a thing. So discipline is, uh, it's actually not one of the spaces we're going to go into in depth in, in this episode here, but discipline is wide range. And again, some parents probably believe again, still in the wooden spoon. So I'm not here to say that is uh, good or bad or whatever, but I'm talking about like physical abuse, like, beating your kid on a regular basis. And especially if there's no discipline involved, it's really just, it gets to a point where you just beat up on your kid because you feel bad about yourself or put your kid down because your life sucks. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the things that are just horrendous and you're just going to cause so much strife with, within yourself and within your kid's life that it's just a no go. It's total deadbeat dickhead dad all the way. Yeah. Again, like I know I've, I've got a, you know, close, a close friend and, um, and yeah, her, uh, her dad like would send her to the hospital just with like broken bones and just crazy, crazy stuff. And she's dealing with these issues still. She's in her forties. Right. So, um, this is unbelievable. The impact and, uh, yeah, it's it's life changing, and it's it's certainly not doing anything good for them. You know, like it's 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 been been really really difficult uh, in so many ways, or relationships and and everything. So, um, so yeah, that's number two. So, so with that one as well is when you think about the whole physical abuse is an easy one, right? You you know if you're doing it or not very very easy the the mental and verbal abuse is it's more difficult to mm -hmm. you know you may not especially if you're not living consciously it, as a dad like you may not even be aware that you are doing these things to your kids so it's really again opening up an avenue to to explore like so give yourself that scale of zero to ten right where zero is you know again physically you know you're going to know but in the mental verbal arena it is a little bit more difficult. So have a good, clear think about it and go, yeah, do I, do I put my kids down ever? Do I, you know, am I not supportive because we should really be their number one fans. And yeah. I'm the first one to say, I do not like this idea of giving everyone a ribbon for the race, uh -huh. giving everyone a medal because they participated. I hate that shit. I don't think that's the way to, to teach kids about, winning and losing and effort and you know things like that um actually first day back at coaching my kids netball team today so in in about two hours i will be uh on the field with eight crazy eight-year-old girls uh teaching <laughs> them netball so, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, mm. wish me luck wish yeah. me luck um so, so here's actually when we were going through this, I mean, some dads might be like, oh, you know, I, I feel like maybe I do talk down or like, or, you know, put down my, my kid in some way, shape or form. And it could be coming off like the, the gray zone is, is when it's, when there's criticism happening. So say you notice something, it's like mm -hmm. maybe your, your kid's playing a sport and, you know, they did something and, and it's like, you know, yeah, I took, um, I'm the trainer for my son's hockey team and we had to take these online courses about how to communicate with, with the kids and, and what to watch for and how parents are talking to their kids. And there was a real difference between a dad that was like ridiculing his son and then another dad who was still giving the son feedback, but it was in a way that was constructive not destructive. So that's the distinction is, is looking at like, are we causing, is, is there, are we being destructive in our criticism or are we sandwiching it and being like, you know, these are some things you did really well. And I noticed this particular area, was there anything going on for you in that stage? How did you feel about that? So getting them to like verbalize what was going on. And then, you know, again, some constructive, constructive, feedback as well where it's not just like ridiculing them 
and knocking them down and making them cry and you know that kind of stuff because that happens and i've seen it happen um i've seen it happen in in uh in my son's team and and it's so hard to watch you know the way the kids responding and you can tell that they're really deflated and um and that kind of stuff can can have an impact and um it's uh it's a deadbeat dad move so it is yeah so really you know some self-reflection i think is a big one for that where is that crossing the line right again on that zero to ten scale if you you know in that two three four range thinking you know yeah i really do that more than more than i'm building them up if i'm tearing them down more than i'm building them up then that's that's a big issue and back to what i was saying about the i'm not a fan of that everyone gets a ribbon right so i'm not mm-hmm. saying this doesn't ever happen and i'm not saying that sometimes you know just don't lose your shit hey dad like sometimes that happens mm-hmm. but for me yeah. and, and i do it right and i and what for me is as soon as I do it, I know I've done it, but I, I instantly will re- reconnect with my kid and go, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. You know, yeah. I lost my temper. Um, yeah. That's not going to happen again right now. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is the reason why. Right. So I think that's really important too, is that when yeah. you do lose your shit, cause you will <laughs> to yeah. let them know why. Right. Because if they, if they don't know why, then they're just going off. And then they create their own whys and who knows right. where they're going to, who knows where they're going to go. So, um, yeah, just some, that's it. Some, that's a real daddy's yeah. move, by the way, Scott, you know, like we, we, as dads, we make mistakes and there's kids who's some dads that are listening to this right now. I know I've made some mistakes some big mistakes and, you know, I've had some real heart to hearts, my kids, you know, where it's like, I got to sit down and I got to like apologize for something that I did that, you know, could really perceive perceived, you know, in a, in, um, in a way that, you know, is, is not going to be, um, good for them. And, and really just like you said, like come in clean and me and say like, sorry that, you know, you know, that came out that way or, you know, that I said that or whatever it may be. And, you know, that's not what I meant or, you know, whatever it may be, um, or that's not something that you'll hear from me again or whatever it may be but really coming clean and speaking to them that way, really with respect and, um, and cleaning that up. That's, um, that's real daddy smooth because we will make mistakes. There'll be times where we make mistakes, but we can, we can do that and we can, um, move forward, you know, in a really productive way. Again, it's about being constructive, being productive, um, and moving things forward in a positive way for sure. And building that relationship, strengthening it, being conscious about it. Right. Being conscious being about a, it. Yeah. Being aware when you, when you fuck up, fix it Suck up. Suck up. <laughs> Suck it up and fix it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, number three. So using your kid as leverage um, in, a, um, in a relationship where perhaps there's a lot of tension. So it could be, you know, a divorced marriage could be separated marriage could be an intact marriage. And the kids are used as leverage as pawns as um, ways to manipulate. Um, and you, Scott mentioned this in the pre show, it, you know, it could be coming from the spouse where the spouse, you know, that the spouse is saying bad stuff about you, um, or is doing this manipulation. Um, and and so, you know, there may be the, the feeling that, okay, well, when she's doing, I'm going to do it back, you know, even the scale, um, you know, there's really no, there's really no win there. You know, there's really no win and there's no benefit to, um, to estrange our kids from, from their mom. Like kids need their mom and they need their dad and they need good mom and they need a good dad, obviously. Um, but, um, definitely, you know, putting your kids in that position uh, and using them as leverage and, and um, basically as manipulation tools, that kind of thing. That's a deadbeat dad move. No doubt. No doubt about it. So um, yeah, like the the whole tit for tat thing doesn't, doesn't work here because you think if it's going on where um, the kid's mom is slagging you and saying bad things about you, 
and you're like, well, obviously I'm going to do that back to, to get her back. It's like, well, that's not getting her back. Number one, what it's doing is being negative around for the kid, right? Kid doesn't need to hear all the bad things about mom. Just like they definitely don't need to hear the bad things about you, but it's about again, being aware of that and just being a man, being the bigger man here, you know, taking the high road and just not doing that shit. And it can be, I get it. It can be, uh, Sometimes it can be unbelievably be difficult, Ugh. and and the the mom and might raging. be just saying the mom might be saying the worst things about you, but totally. you know when you and especially if again time with the kids in in situations where if you guys are not together and you only get the kids for a shorter period of time, mom's got them for longer, then those mm-hmm. attitudes can be formed negative against you, but. You got to stand up, be the man, and be the best dad you can. That's what's going to make. That's what then the kids are going to realize. Well, this isn't true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And let's talk about what the high road is. Like, you know, be, be, being specific. Um, it, you know, it's it's really about. Let's say that you know, like the kids have told you things that mom that their mom has been saying about you, for example, and. Um, and so, you know, part of it is like acknowledging it and, and being like, yeah, you know, saying those things. And, um, and that's an opportunity to really let your kids know what you're committed to. You know, and maybe, maybe there's some truth inside of what she said and, and you can acknowledge the truth in it. Um, and if there isn't any truth in it, you can just acknowledge what you're committed to as far as your relationship with your kids, with your kids and what they can expect from you. And um, that's a very, forward thinking conversation it's it's giving them some sense of security and hope for a better future and really that's what people want people want hope for a better future kids adults everybody wants hope for a better future and it takes a very difficult situation where you could totally go the other way and actually create more uncertainty more tension in those kids lives um, more distraction. Like it's very difficult for a kid to learn well and to be happy when they have so much tension and difficulty in their life because of these parental disputes and, and they're caught in the middle of it. Um, it's not good for them in their development. And, um, and so by just the practice of actually sharing what you're committed to looking moving forward and acknowledging, yeah, things aren't really that great with mom. Um, I acknowledge she's saying these things. Um, and there may be some truth in you because acknowledge some of the true things, but that's not what you're committed to. This is what you're committed to moving forward. And then it's really lining up your actions with what you're saying. And, and that's, that's the way to, to really, you know, that's a daddiest move right there. Um, the deadbeat dad move is the one that, yeah, just gets right back in there and calling, you know, calling her this and calling her that. Like it's just teaching the kids so many just absolutely negative things and, and stresses them. Um, it's going to hurt their development, um, but it's going to teach them that it's okay to to do that. And I think it's the last thing that um, we really want our kids to do. So, okay. Anything else to add to that, Scott? No, I just, I don't know, something you just said got me thinking like the question, are you a deadbeat dad or are you a daddiest dad? Absolutely. It's the yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. And right, I so, hope that we're clear that daddiest dad doesn't mean you're perfect, but no. you're striving for better. Like you're consciously right. striving for better and that's a daddiest dad. So the daddiest dad may have made mistakes and, and that's why that marriage isn't together again, right? And the daddiest dad will be moving forward and, and being conscious and moving forward. So it doesn't matter where you're at right now. You could be a daddiest dad by making those steps, being conscious, moving forward, and wanting to be a better dad every day. If you don't care, you know, if you don't care about any of these things and you've kind of thrown in the towel and you couldn't care less, you know, about the health of your kids and and, and that kind of thing, then that's a deadbeat dad. Absolutely. hundred um, percent. Okay. Number four. 
So number four is, is the dad who couldn't care less if he moved across the country, never saw his kids again, um, or even, you know, lives with their kids and couldn't care less if he sees them. He's got no time for them, doesn't want to support them in any way, emotionally, physically, um, spiritually, anything. Like just as no effort, no, no time at all for, um, for his kids. And um, that's a deadbeat dad move. That's kind of like definitely you said, chucking the sperm in and being like, "I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm checked out." Someone yeah, else take so care of the, that. You know, we get that there's potentially lots of different circumstances where dads may not live in the same area, like um, a lot of fly-in, fly-out dads, or mm-hmm. um, for whatever reasons. There's there's reasons there that could fit in the not deadbeat dad situation but if it's like well you know i found a better job in this town that's 700 miles away so i think i'll take it Mm -hmm. right like not even a okay well i'm gonna do this for this defined period of time because the money is like quadruple what i'm making now we can finally get out of our financial debt and there's a plan and a vision and an action behind it and you're getting together still with the kids on a regular basis when and if you can so we're not talking about that kind of thing but we're talking about like the dad who just yep yeah, i'm just gonna move across country because uh you know i don't like new york anymore i want to see the west coast or whatever right just no mm-hmm. no no time no action no support of the kids in any way financially mentally with your actual time right and then to a lesser degree we've got the dads who are like you said they are at home they actually can see the kids and probably do see the kids pretty much every day but they would rather and spend more time with their buddies out drinking beers than with their kids at the whatever right and i get it i'm not talking about you know you joke about it all the time actually when we go to my kids uh, like ballet recital the dads are all there and we, we go get a beer beforehand. Right. But then we go in and we watch the kids. So we're doing both, which is great. And for some reason it uh, just came to me. It's, it's a line in a Tracy Chapman song, fast cars. Do you remember that one? Well, probably. You got a fast car. All right, right, right. I got a plan. They get us out of here. Been moving out of the whatever it is. And then um, one of the lines is, I, I don't know where this just came from. Um, is uh, um, you spend more time with your friends than you do with your kids. Like that's in that song. And I think you know that song is probably really about deadbeat dads. Actually, mm. wow. Now that I think about it, that's probably exactly what that song is about. Mm-hmm. Because she's at yeah. home taking care of her dad and she wants to get out. So she finds this guy who's got a car to drive him away. She's working to try and make money. They got kids, but he's never there. He's out drinking with his buddies. That's exactly mm. what I'm talking about. Cool. Mm. Look at mm. that. Tied that go. shit in. Wow. There's <laughs> beauty of the brain, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what Crazy. we're talking about, right? You could be – like if you're – and, and again, we've done an episode just recently about are you spending too much time on your phone and some of the stats and looking at the kids' stats too, but you as a dad too, you, you know, presence and concentrated mm. presence, like turning shit off and being with your kids for 10 minutes, like 100% attention is way better than trying to do 10 things at once for an hour and go, oh yeah, I just spent an hour with the kids, but I actually had a, had a call I had to do and I was on Facebook doing this and I was doing that and I was doing that. But, but the kids were there and I was always saying, and they're saying, get off the phone. And I'm saying, oh, give me a minute, I'll be there. And then I'm there for 30 seconds and I got, got something else to do. You know, schedule it out better so that you take 10 or 15 minutes and just be with them and let them know, hey, next 15 minutes. And I always do this, put my timer on. Yeah, here we, here you go, you know, and help her. She she gets in there and sets it up and puts the timer on. And so then we know it's like we got this amount of time, and then Dad's got to go do some work for a little while, right? So having that mm-hmm. time there mm-hmm. on a consistent basis and letting them know what's going on, rather than trying to juggle it all and missing the ball on everything. Too many plates time. spinning. Yeah, Pre- present time is is uh is like 
the currency, right? It's, it's, it's their currency. Like they, they love present time and it's, it just gives them so much joy to have your undivided attention and, you know, to, to not give them that it's, it's just really robbing them of so much. Um, and so, yeah, to, to never give your kids the time, you know, to always, um, like we're talking like to always be that person who, um, puts it off, always puts it off. Um, never gives them your time. And, um, and yeah, it just is going to really make them feel like they're not important. Nobody likes feeling that way. Nobody likes feeling not important. And, um, and so, yeah, like a daddy's move is even if you're like super busy, uh, is to take that, you know, to set the timer and be like, Hey, okay, you've got me for this much time. Let's, let's do what you want to do. You know, even if it's something that you don't want to do, it doesn't matter. It's, it's about that currency. It's about that time that you're with them um, and giving them your undivided attention with whatever that is. And that could be singing wheels on the bus, you know, for the thousandth time. Um, yeah, so. we, we, we have a chapter in the book um, about this. And one of the things we talk about in there is figuring out the two or three or four things and you know i've only got one kid so it's easier for me but the two or three or four things that are like your goat that you know your kid just loves doing with you and so then when you have that time if you only have 10 minutes you can go straight to that thing that your kids just love doing with you tickle fight or you know whatever it is but you know okay this 10 minutes that i tickle fight with this kid is going to mean like mm. is worth the, the whole day worth of attention. Absolutely. Having those, having those go-tos so that you, that 10 minutes isn't wasted with what do you get? What do we, what do you want to do? Because you know, what's the kid going to say when you say, what do you want to do? Oh, they're going to go know. for their go-to. Well, they go um, for the go-to or the, do, 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 I don't know. What do you want to do? That's <laughs> like, ask them, ask them what they did at school. I oh, yeah. Right. I don't know. Not, they did the, I was there. Good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we got to drag it out of them sometimes. So having that go to and not even having them have to ask to do it. Yeah, like, I, got, hey. I got ten minutes. Let's go do take a fight. Hey, they'll be like, wanna go wrestle? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yeah, I want to go wrestle. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, love it. Great. Okay, so silver lining. Um, I think we've mentioned this a few times, and and that is is that doesn't matter where we are, we can choose to be better you know a choice is a decision takes a a moment and with a decision that happens in a split second we can literally change the course of our life and we can change so much about the course of our kids lives because of that decision we have the opportunity as human beings to at any moment in our lives change the course of our lives through decision it's very powerful And so the gift of this podcast is to really open that up and make that a possibility for every dad listening to this. Wherever you are on the scale, you could be right totally at the deadbeat level or you could be somewhere in between and knowing that you could be better, you can actually decide to be better. You could decide to be the dad who is on a path to really forge um, a wonderful relationship, a long lasting relationship with your kids that is productive, fulfilling, loving, uh, nurturing, or really giving them, you know, as much as you possibly can to help them in their life. And, and with that will come, you know, so much joy and memories. And, you know, when it comes down to it, I believe life is all about relationships and quality of relationships and creating memories with those people. Um, and so you have the opportunity to do that with somebody who is, it's, it's the person's a part of you. They came from you. And, you know, I was, I was just the other day, my daughter was falling asleep. She's seven years old and she really likes just having her, uh, her face stroked like this. And, you know, if you go like right over 
and um and i was doing this to her and she's falling asleep and i was just thinking wow this is such a gift to be able and an honor and just an incredible experience to be able to do that because I couldn't do this to just anybody. I couldn't do that. And she trusts me and, and she loves me. And, um, it's such a unique experience. And so, you know, we all have different things that, you know, can be those, you know, unique experiences that, um, are really, um, you know, really something that's sacred between, um, our son and and us or our daughter and us and 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 that's what you have available to you is to create those sacred moments those times that there's that connection and that love that there's nothing else like it and so this podcast dads is is really about growth it's about creating awareness um, no matter where you are on the scale you can always do better you know, you can always do better and it comes, starts with the decision. So hopefully we've inspired you in some way, shape or form. Scotty, any words? Yeah, I'll finish up with, um, you know, something you just mentioned. There's, it is really all about being aware of what's going on because, you know, if we look at, okay, being abusive, your own drug abuse, using the kids as leverage and time with the kids. Um, if, if you're just not aware enough to realize that any of these things are happening because they are on a scale, right? It's like I said, obvious things are if you're a heroin addict or if you are beating the shit out of your kids to the point they're in hospital. Like those are the like ridiculously aware things that you, there's no doubt you would know that that's happening. But there's so many nuances and smaller areas that you might not just be aware that you're doing it. You might not be aware that you're being mentally abusive or that your prescription drug has become too much of a problem, or that you really aren't being present with your kids ever, right? So being aware is key. And I think it's really about just standing up and being a man, right? Don't stick your head in the sand. Don't stick your head up your own ass. Get it out. Look at what you're doing. Put yourself on a scale from zero to 10 or zero to 100 and find out where you are. Mm -hmm. And be the man. And by being the man, I'm not talking about being the macho man. I'm talking about being the vulnerable man, being the man who asks for help, right? Being the guy mm -hmm. who talks to his buddies about what's going on, being the man who joins a group like our daddy's Facebook group who are mm -hmm. full of men who are looking to be better dads. So that's sort of my final thing is be vulnerable, ask for help, join our group so that we can help you. Awesome. All right, dads. Until next time. Daddy, Bye. Up. See ya. Thanks for listening. Remember, join our Facebook community, Daddyus, where conscious dads connect and collaborate.